Hi juniors, so here we are in our next video on oxidation reduction chemistry and I mentioned before that we've got to get through some kind of basic ideas so what we're going to look at is balancing redox reactions. There's really no way to make this exciting. It's an algorithm that you can apply to every unbalanced redox reaction that's out there. You follow the steps and it'll get you to the right answer every time. Of course you have to apply the steps correctly to get to the right answer but it will work without fail. Now, some of you might be in AP chemistry and you uh, may soon be learning another method to balance redox reactions. Or you can actually look in AP prep books or SAT2 prep books and they'll show you a different algorithm. That other algorithm is in fact a little bit shorter, but occasionally, every now and then, you bump into a reaction that that other method will have trouble balancing. Also, the method I'm going to show you is a little bit more complete and it helps illustrate some of the issues that we're going to run into when we start talking about galvanic cells, which is going to be the next topic we're going to cover. So I'm only going to show you this one method. Yes, it is slightly longer than the other method, but it works every single time. So to balance a redox reaction, like balancing every other kind of reaction in the world, the number of atoms on either side of the reaction arrow have to balance. But since we're talking about a redox reaction, what also has to balance is the number of electrons. If you have four moles of electrons that are coming out of the oxidation, you must have four moles of electrons going into the reduction, right? That just makes sense. And also, since we're talking about reactions that are going to be occurring principally in aqueous systems, we often have charged species floating around, so you need to make sure that the charge on the left-hand side is equal to the charge on the right-hand side. Maybe the net charge is zero on one side and the other, or maybe the net charge is minus three on the left, so it also needs to be minus three on the right. Whatever that charge is, it has to balance. And also, since most of the chemistry we're going to be talking about does occur in aqueous systems, we often have conditions that are done under acidic or basic conditions. So there's some extra acid ions floating around or some hydroxide ions floating around in the system, and they need to be there to help carry the current. But rest assured, know for now that um, oxidation reduction chemistry often occurs under acidic or basic conditions, and that will affect slightly how we do the same. All right, so let's look at this specific example here of dichromate is going to be reacting, it's going to be oxidizing ethanol to make chromium-3 and carbon dioxide. As you can see right there, it is not balanced. And I bet that if you tried to balance this through a process of trial and error and inspection, you would spend quite a bit of time trying to get this one to work out. So you really do have to approach this in a step-by-step -step algorithmic way. So step one, you have to assign oxidation states to all the species. Now I'm going to zero in on the parts that ultimately change oxidation state. Like chromium here is a plus six oxidation state, and then it goes to plus three. The carbon here in carbon dioxide on the right hand side has an oxidation state of plus four. And the carbon here in the ethanol, well let's work through it. The oxygen's minus two, the hydrogens are plus one, so I've got a total of plus 6, minus 2 from the oxygen is plus 4, and so ultimately I need to get a minus 2 for each of the carbons. So there are all of my oxidation states. So you can see that the chromium goes from plus 6 to plus 3, so it's getting reduced, and the carbon goes from minus 2 to plus 4, so it's getting oxidized. Then we're going to write what we call half reactions, and the half reactions are taking this overall complete right now unbalanced redox reaction in writing the reduction half and the oxidation half. So the chromium is getting reduced and the carbon's being oxidized. So we write those species in their own half reactions. And every step we're going to do for the next uh, about eight steps or six steps only affect the half reactions. We'll combine the half reactions back together in a little bit. Step three. What we're going to now do is balance the elements that are not hydrogen and oxygen. So in the reduction half reaction, that would be chromium. So we put a 2 there to balance the chromiums. I have two carbons here, one carbon there, so I put a 2 in front of carbon dioxide to balance those. 
So now everything but O and H is taken care of in this example. Next, I'm going to balance the oxygens by adding water to one side or the other of each half reaction. So I have seven oxygens on the left of the reduction. So I need to bring seven waters to the party to balance the oxygens. I have four oxygens on the right in my oxidation, one oxygen on the left, so I need three more oxygens in the form of three waters. So now the oxygens are balanced. Next, and this is where the acidity or basicity of the problem comes into play, we're doing this under acidic conditions. So what we're going to do is we're going to add H plus to account for the hydrogens. So originally I have no hydrogens on the left, and I have 14 hydrogens on the right from those waters. So let's add 14 H plus to the left. I have 5, 6, and then 5 more. I have, uh, is that right? No, hold on, 5, 6, 6. Sorry, so that's 12 hydrogens on the left, so I need to add 12 H pluses on the right of my uh, reduction to get it to balance. I'm sorry, this is the oxidation to get it to balance. All right, so you can see by adding water and fixing the oxygen, we mess up the hydrogen. By adding hydrogen to fix the hydrogens, what we do is now we introduce charge. So we're going to mess up the charge. So next we have to fix the charge. We're going to balance charge by adding electrons. Right? Electrons are negative. This is redox chemistry, so this makes some good sense. I have plus 6 on the right. I have minus 2, plus 14, so for a total of plus 12 on the left. So I add 6 electrons to the left to get me down to a, a total of um, plus 6 on the left and on the right. I have no charge on the left in my, um, in my oxidation. I have plus 12 on the right, so I need to add 12 electrons on the right of the oxidation. Now here would be a good time to pause. The top reaction is a reduction. And reduction means that something is gaining electrons. So if something's gaining electrons, it makes sense that in that half reaction, electrons are a reactant. In the oxidation, that means something is giving up electrons. So it makes sense that I should have electrons as a product. So make sure that when you are at this point that you are adding the electrons to the left of the reduction and to the right of the oxidation. Next, because I can't have spurious electrons, the moles of electrons going in have to equal the moles of electrons coming out, I'm going to multiply each half reaction by the necessary multiple to make sure that my moles of electrons between reduction and oxidation are equivalent. You see here I have 6 electrons and 12 electrons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply, in my case, my whole reduction reaction by 2, to get the electrons to be equal. So 6 electrons turn in, turns into 12, 14 H's turn into 28, 1 uh, dichromate turns into 2, 2 chromiums into 4, 7 waters into 14. And I leave the oxidation alone. So now I can cancel like terms and add the reactions back together. What has to cancel at this point? Without doubt, these have to go away? The electrons, of course. I will also typically be able to cancel out hydrogens. So here's 12 hydrogens to cancel with many of those 28. So now I have uh, 16 hydrogens left over. Waters will also tend to cancel. Here's 3, there's 14, so I'm down to 11. Then I combine the two half reactions back together, and I get my final answer here. And last but not least, and many of you are not going to do this because you don't think you need to, but you really should check double check. So let's do atoms. I have 16 H's plus 6 more H's for a total of 22 H's on the left, 11 times 2, 22 H's on the right. I have 14 O's plus 1 more for 15 O's on the left, 11 plus 4 for 15 O's on the right. 4 chromiums, 4 chromiums. 2 carbons, 2 carbons. Charge should also balance. 16 pluses, 4 minuses, so that's a total of 12 plus on the left. 4 times 3, 12 plus on the right. So I know I have this problem right. 
atoms and charge balance, and we already saw previously, right, that our electrons balance. So this problem is 100% right. And here's the great thing about these problems. You can check your work so you know at the end whether you get the problem right or wrong. You can grade your own problems here. And you know what? On a quiz or a test, you can write on these problems if you've checked and you know you get it right. Write on the quiz or test. Dr. Crane, Dr. Kim, got this one right. No need for you to check. All right, so check your answers. Very quickly, I want to show you what you do if you have a basic solution. You actually follow the exact same algorithm. You just have to do a little bit more work. When you get to step eight, what you're going to do after step eight, and that's when you, after you've added H pluses, so there will be H pluses in your basic solution. What you do is that you then kind of sort of titrate it over to basic solutions. So what you do is you add as many OHs to both sides of the reaction as you had H plus left over on one side. So if you had four H pluses on the left, what you do is you add four OHs, OH minuses to the left, and four OH minuses to the right. When you have H plus and OH minus on the same side of a reaction, they come together to form water. Then what you'll have is you'll have a surplus of hydroxide in the system, so now it's operating under basic conditions. All right. I've got another video that will walk you through balancing under basic conditions. You can watch that video if you want. Also available on the website is going to be a handout that um, goes step by step to sample problems, to additional sample problems of balancing redox reactions, one under acidic conditions, one under basic conditions. And we'll spend some class time practicing this algorithm. We want to get automatic and good at this algorithm. It's not hard, but you do have to practice it to make sure you catch any issues you might have with it. All right, that's all for now.